Hello and welcome back to Melbourne Airport and of course Airport CEO. I was just letting the game run for a little bit here, building up a little bit more cash. We have paid back the loan we took in the last episode when we had a new emergency that we haven't seen yet. The water pressure in one of our bathroom facilities has exploded and the entire room needs maintenance by service technicians and janitors in order to operate again. This will basically get dealt with by itself, so that's going to be absolutely fine. I've made a couple of small changes here, uh, just in between episodes as well. I went ahead and replaced all our small desks with medium desks so that we can handle uh, any baggage that comes out of it. Uh, I only have four. I'm hoping that's enough with the self-check-in desks as well. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but I think that will be okay. Today's episode, we're mostly going to be focusing on this lobby, at least at the start. Let's get this looking a little bit pretty, putting in a few more decorations here and there and getting that all set up. The only other thing that I really did was actually connect this baggage claim area to the baggage bay because it wasn't connected and people were not getting their luggage. So that's all we've done between episodes. We have a little bit of money uh, saved up here. We also re-enabled the fuel uh, automatic reordering of fuel because our fuel crisis ended and apart from that you guys are all pretty much caught up so if we let this run we should see our janitors and service maintenance people come in here and start working on this room we can go ahead and open it immediately they can use the toilets and sinks that are currently repaired and that will be fine uh, apart from that that emergency is pretty straightforward and easy to deal with so we're not going to worry about that too too much we have a pretty good cash flow going at the moment, about 17000 an hour, so that is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, this has already been dealt with, and that's good to go. And we've got some stuff. Oh, we have an email about contract negotiations. This is something that we definitely want to have a look at. We have contracts open for negotiation with Havana, Trinity, and Nordic. We can go ahead and review these contracts and try to negotiate ourselves a better deal. So the way that we do that is we jump into the economy tab here, go to our accepted contracts and you can see these three are orange or yellow, whatever you want to say. We have 15 negotiation points available. If we go ahead and click on Havana here or Havana, I'm not sure hundred percent how you pronounce that. Our current deal is $2,500 per flight because we're only servicing their small airlines. That is something that we can negotiate. And we'll have a look at all three of these. Make sure that none of them are more important than the others. And these ones probably are. Because they have two different airlines coming in, we might get more flights from them. I'm not 100% sure if that's how that works. But if we go ahead and click negotiate, we can say we want $3,654 per small flight, an increase of $1,100. That is a shameful deal. And they will not give, us, give that to us. But we can spend some of our negotiation points and we can bring that up to an 82% chance that they accept that deal. Of course, this is a little bit ridiculous. We pro since we only have three negotiations that we can do, we'd probably like to spend around five per airline. So if we just bring this back now, that's risky getting an extra six, uh, $769 per flight. If we drop it one back, back more, we can get an extra $577 per flight from this airline uh, at a 96% chance. So we're gonna go ahead and send them that offer it has been accepted and now we are getting $3,077 per flight from this airline. We can go ahead and do the exact same thing with the others. We have 12 points, so we'll use six and see how we can, how far we can push this. That's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, we can go to 577 and maybe also increase, no, we can't increase the medium as well. We'll save ourselves a point, get 96% expected. That'll be fine. That's the exact same as the other one, also accepted. Not taking any risks here really with these negotiations and if we do the exact same thing here we might even be able to bump this up a little bit more yes yeah, 75 percent chance to get 769 dollars more per small flight let's go ahead and send that offer it has also been accepted so that is fantastic news and negotiations are done you can also check this box here which will enable auto negotiation so that means that your uh, employees will handle that for you and you don't have to go in manually but I like to do it for the first couple times just to see if we get anything particularly interesting. Let the game run for a little bit longer here as we jump into a time lapse just while we save up a little bit more money and as we jump into this time lapse 
we get a emergency straight away. So we're not jumping into it just yet. We have a weight class small uh, equipment failure. Why is unspecified assistance? That's fine. We can go ahead and get them in on a stand and that should pretty much deal with itself. Now we'll jump into a time lapse. And as we do, I want to tell you about the membership drive that we have currently going on. If you become a member before the 25th of August this month, you will go into the draw to win a piece of merch from the Chubby Panda merch store sent to you free of charge, just as a little thank you for supporting the channel. Becoming a member does not only put you in the entry for that giveaway, it also gives you early access to all of the videos that we release. It could be a day early, two days early, it could be a week early in some situations. Uh, it also gives you access to our members only Discord as well as the moats, and it just generally helps support the channel. So if you have the means to do that, I highly appreciate all of you who can become members. All right, with around $500,000 in the bank account, we should be good to go to start working on this lobby area a little bit more. I'm noticing that we are getting some notifications saying that our check-in desks are not available because we don't have enough of them. That is a little bit frustrating. I was hoping this sort of would take the brunt of it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why these aren't set to that. Uh, I think what I will actually do is I'll save the game here. We'll call this Melbourne at five mid, save the game and we'll reload just to check that that is not a bug that's happening because these should be helping and I can't actually see any flights scheduled on these. So I'm not sure why they aren't working. They're all connected to the baggage bay, so they should be in theory. So we'll go ahead and reload and be back in just a sec. All right, we are back and it looks like these are, yeah, now these are all working. So if we jump into our flight monitor, you can see that we no longer have any issues here. We'll keep an eye on that just to make sure that that continues to work. But in the meantime, we're going to plan this out. We're going to move some of our security, upgrade our security going into the terminal and also create a nice big waiting area. We can't really do much with check-ins over here just because our car parks are a little bit in the way, but that's fine. We'll make it work. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump into a time lapse. I'll plan all this out and we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so we have upgraded security, which makes this a little bit more secure. These guys now have scanners and x-rays and all sorts of good things going on. Uh, I don't love the layout of these travelators now. I kind of wish they were moved like one more square up. Uh, but that sort of is what it is. The only other option is to move like one of these exits somewhere else uh, and have these come down a little bit. And I think that would probably look nicer. But at this point, they're kind of a pain to move unless we do them one by one. Uh, but I think it's going to be worth it because I really don't like how this looks up here. We could potentially also just say, hey, we don't need that much security and use the medium ones instead. These come with a metal detector and x-ray machine. These come with metal detector and x-ray machine as well. So I'm not sure what the benefit of the larger ones is. It looks like there is another machine in them. Uh, but if any of you guys know the benefits of these larger machines and could let me know in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. There is also a chance that we don't actually need these at all and the small ones are more than fine and they just do like a manual bag search. Yeah, that's exactly what happens there. They're probably slower. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these. I changed my mind and I'm going to replace them with the medium ones for now. So we'll jump back into a quick little time lapse as I get that done. And I think that looks a lot nicer. Uh, still not perfect with the way some of these things lined up, but I'm definitely happier with that overall. We have three exits, which is definitely overkill, but it just gives people a little bit more options with their movements. So that should be absolutely fine. And then we have three security checkpoints with some machines and a scanner and stuff like that. So that should be good to rock and roll. I'm now not loving how I've laid out these check-in desks either. I think they maybe need to move. This bathroom maybe needs to move as well. Uh, just so that we can have a little bit more in terms of like, access to this. And maybe even add a couple more medium check-ins. So I'm thinking with that in mind, we might change this to an elevator. 
grow that down in like this corner here. Move this bathroom off to maybe this section and make it a little bit lit bigger as well because it's a little bit tight right now and then rearrange how these check-in desks work. So we'll jump back in for a little bit here as we get that done. I don't know why there is a line there. What's happening here? Did I not build that? Yeah, that was never built. That little section of wall was never built, but that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump back into a time-lapse. I'll get some of this stuff moved and we'll jump back in from there. Okay, that's looking a little bit better, a little bit more to my liking. Now I'm thinking we do a waiting area over in this section. Uh, I kind of wish that I'd moved these down like one more, but yeah, it sort of is what it is at this point. We might redesign this entire thing at some point in the future, but for now I think this is just going to have to do, and we'll just have to be happy enough with it uh, for it to be called good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you guys have any suggestions on how to make this look a little bit nicer, I would appreciate them in the comments. But we have an emergency, we need to find a stand for someone. Uh, okay. Didn't tell me things? Okay. Maybe we didn't have to find- Oh, it might have been general aviation. That should be fine. So that should just resolve itself. We have a look here. Yeah, it was. It was general aviation, so they'll find their own stand and that will be fine. No dramas there. And we are slowly but surely making a good chunk of money. We started with 500,000. And during the process of building all of this, we're up to 740,000. So can't complain there. We also added a couple more check-in desks over to the side just so that we have a little bit more room here. I think this will look better if we add a couple more elevators in here and get this looking a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and do that and also plan out our waiting area. And I think something like that is not too bad. Obviously we can fill up these sort of corner areas a little bit later. I'm thinking we might end up having a separate terminal for medium aircraft coming out this way, or maybe some like a little helicopter terminal that's a little bit separate from this one. Uh, so that could come up through this area here. Obviously we could also extend this waiting area down, maybe even put in, you know what I wanna put in right now actually? is we can put in some laptop tables because I kind of like the laptop tables. So if we just set this up just with the singular one, actually we'll make it double sided and we can use those same armchairs again just to make this sort of match in terms of general vibes. Throw plant on either side and then we can just grab our copy paste tool, just delete it and then sort of, I want this basically in the center here, maybe up a little bit. And if we go two from the wall there, Give a gap of two. We're gonna have some nice little laptop charging stations down there. And do we have room for any of the big trees here? No, it doesn't quite work. But I kind of want to divide this up just a little bit, maybe with these hedges. We go something like that, and we just have like two gaps the whole way along, something like that, just so that it's like its own little private area. Uh, I think that could be quite cool. And the other thing that I kind of want to do down here is add in maybe some like black marble just to separate that out even more. Although I don't know how I feel about that to be completely honest with you. We might change that up in the long run. Maybe like a yellow carpet since we've got a very yellow theme going for a airport on the uh, YouTube channel with our thumbnails. That could be interesting. I think you know the problem here is I think this is marble we do that, that might look better. I don't love it. I'm going to ditch that floor. We'll figure out the floor a little bit later and that's not actually marble. I think it's this marble. Yeah, there we go. And you know, I don't actually like these plants. <laughs> it's generally the way that it goes. Uh, but this looks like it's all working nicely. We added a couple of shops in here too. They are making money and meeting their goals. I believe these ones are too. This one didn't quite make it yesterday. And this one is not making it at all, so we might have to downgrade the star level of those shops in the future as well. Uh, but for right now, since we have a little bit of money in our bank account, 
One thing that we can do to help us save a little bit of money, which sounds counterintuitive, is actually upgrading all our taxiways, all our stands, and our runways to be concrete because they require less maintenance because they last longer. So I think that's what we'll do next. And that should be good to go. I believe all of our emergencies are being resolved on their own. Yeah, they should be fine. Uh, we do have some issues on the flight monitor again. No available check-in desks, which is strange. Do we not have enough staff? No, we've got enough staff. Are these connected to the baggage bays? Yeah, they're all working. We should be fine. We might be having that bug again where these aren't connecting. We might have to save and reload again. But for now, they seem like everyone's happy enough with the situation there. Our baggage handling is going good. So yeah, we're going to jump into another time-lapse. Pretty time-lapse heavy episode, this, this one. Uh, but lots of sort of busy work to do. And we're going to just go ahead and upgrade all of this to concrete, which is going to make our airport just look that, that much better. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think that is pretty much everything as they complete these taxiways. The only other thing is these little areas here, right? So if you are unaware, you jump into uh, aircraft infrastructure, you have concrete tiles and you can just place these down under the buildings to make them look like concrete. And that should fix those problems right up. We're going to do the same thing here. We'll probably have buildings there at some point and I kind of like it down here as well. Uh, anywhere else that needs concrete. We're going to leave this open for the moment. Uh, probably under our ATC tower and one more just under this fuel depot like so and that should be good to go all upgraded to concrete in the long run that's going to save us money even though that did cost us like half a million dollars to do it'll just mean that the uh, runway condition degrades a little bit slower and therefore should make maintaining that uh, a lot cheaper in the long run obviously big initial expense but should pay off overall the other thing i want to do is change out these floors because i don't like looking at this great the only thing is i don't really like any of the floors in this game uh none of them really speak to me in a way where i am excited to use them i might be able to use this clinker in the bathrooms that's kind of nice I am not opposed to that. So that will be the first change that we make here. Just getting things a little bit more organized. We also need to add a bathroom up here at some point as well. But for now, that's a little bit of improvement. As far as the look of the general floor, I kind of like the idea of like a nice white marble. But I don't really love many of the options. Like if we went for like this tile, that doesn't really look great. I just, I, I don't like most of these floors. I think they look kind of bad from a distance. Like as soon as you zoom out, it just kind of looks sad. <laughs> uh, we could go for maybe this. This is like a light concrete. That's very white uh, and doesn't really have a lot of texture. I kind of want the scaling on these to be bigger and that's just not something that we can do. That's too dark. That is far too dark. Uh, what if we went for like a graphic? Yeah, that's probably not it either, is it? I, honestly, I'm leaning towards this. I think from a distance it doesn't look too bad. It does look very outside though. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think we should do with the floors here. Maybe this is better? That's probably my favorite so far. It sort of reminds me of just like a nice carpet texture. And I think for now we'll go with that. And we might change it in the future if you guys have any better suggestions. So I'll just go ahead and put this all over our airport real quick. Alright, that looks a little bit nicer. I, I, I still don't love it. The other thing I want to do at some point is go ahead and change the color of all the furniture. But I think that is a job for another day. I'm thinking we go with like strong yellow themes with little bit little bits of red mixed in here and there uh yeah we're gonna pretend this is like a wooden floor even though it's clearly not it's somewhere between a wooden floor and a carpet floor and we'll go from there the other thing that i do have available to me is a whole bunch of decorations 
that we could potentially use to sort of decorate the floor a little bit more. Like things like this. We can have like little lines going into our escalators. And little details like that I think are going to make a pretty big difference overall. Like I kind of want to have this area blocked off a little bit. Maybe with something like this. If we went like so. Just across here to say hey you guys can't walk here. This is like a staff only zone. I think that could be a cool idea to have in our airport. I also want to move these uh move these down a little bit or at the very least maybe just delete this last one we'll say hey you don't exist anymore and that will be fine uh, we have some more contract negotiations coming up but yeah I think with a little bit of decorating here and there we should be able to get this looking kind of cool is there any decorations that would work for this section in here if we went say with a bathroom symbol surely there's a bathroom symbol in here somewhere right Yes. We went like this and say, hey, do you guys know that this is here? So we can go up to a 5x5 five five with this around there. That's our bathroom. Just so that people know where the bathroom is and they can get in there. That's actually, honestly, probably too big. <laughs> but it's little things like this that I want to go ahead and do at some point just to get this working. We'll go like that so that they know that that is indeed a bathroom. Alright, apologies for the jump cut here, but I was going to call the episode there and then I went into my editing software and realized with all the time lapses we did in this episode, the episode was only about 22 minutes long, so we're going to keep going for a little bit longer here. One of the first things that I want to do in this second little play session is go into our economy because we did have a contract that has negotiation and it is actually quite an important one. It's for fuel and go. So currently we're paying 69 cents per liter for avgas 100 double l and jet a1 is 19 cents per liter we can go ahead and negotiate that and because that's the only negotiation that we currently have available to us we can be quite aggressive with this obviously with this one we actually want to lower the price rather than increase it so if we max this out we'll be saving 45 cents per liter on avgas and 13 cents per liter on jet a1 which is pretty big. So if we just spend all 17 of our points here, we can get reasonable, which I'm willing to try to get that discount. That's going to be pretty decent savings for our airport overall. So we're going to send them that offer and they declined it. <laughs> that is one of the risks you play when you negotiate these offers. We lose all of our negotiation points and we keep the current deal that we had with fuel and go. With that said though, we can actually have a look at aviation fuel supply. So this was 69 and 19. We have a look at the contracts we have available. This one's worse, worse, and these guns are going to be definitely worse because they're only three stars. So that's nothing we can really do about that for the moment. It sort of just is what it is. Our airport's running quite nicely at this stage. I think one other thing that I want to get done reasonably quickly here is now that we have 10 commercial flights going on at any given point in time, our buses here are going to require a lot of foot traffic. So I want to go ahead and finally get this set up. We have our underground parking here already set up and people can get in and out of the airport in that way. But I would like to set this lane up here for buses and just exclusively buses. We'll convert these to taxis and car stands. And then we'll have our buses purely coming out this way. So to do so, we just need some public roads. Pretty straightforward. And we'll run these up. Uh, and I'm thinking we'll run them sort of into here. And that'll be fine for now. We probably still only need like one or two of these. So I think we can just go ahead and straight fit them in there. If we ever need to expand this, we can extend this road out and put some more bus stops in. Uh, I am noticing though that that is not going to allow them to walk across. So I actually want to shift this entire thing over by one. So we'll go ahead and do that. Which is going to mean, of course, demolishing that world entrance. But that's fine because we don't actually need people to build that anyway. So we'll grab ourselves another world entrance tunnel. And we'll move it over by one square. Put that in there. And then we can go ahead and do that exact same thing. Let's just cut it a little bit short so that we can have a footpath going up that side and throw in two bus stops up here with a sidewalk 
coming in like so. And I like to give them a little bit of extra side work walk at the top as well, just because I think it looks nicer. And I'm going to extend that up as well, just because, again, I think aesthetics are somewhat important in this game. And with that said, we are going to wait for that to be built, and then we will demolish these bus stands and get them replaced with taxiways and stuff like that. So we might actually just turn these off so that buses don't come in. Uh, that way, when this is built, they'll know that they have to come in this way instead. So that should be good to go. Just a second here. We can, I mean, if we're turning them off, we may as well just delete them right now. That makes more sense to me. And then we'll jump back in and grab ourselves. Basically the same situation here. We'll have car stops here and here as soon as they're demolished. Uh, the bus stand has been built. We do have buses coming in, which is good to see. We should be able to just do a quick little U-turn here and leave without any dramas. Let's just make sure that is true. Yes, perfect. That looks good to me. And yeah, car stops here and here, and then taxi stops here and here. I will just leave this a little less congested in the long run. Uh, by separating them with separate world entrances, the cars are pretty clever in where they need to go. They'll only come in the ones that you need. Imagine you have sort of some sort of interchange just outside the airport, and that's what is leading into these roads. That's how I like to imagine it anyway. So that should be good. All right, what do we do next? I think we should probably address the elephant in the room, which is all of our mix, mishmash colors in our airport. It's looking a little bit drab, a little bit uh, not very friendly and welcoming. So I think we'll go ahead and jump into a yet another time lapse here and start working on this. I kind of wish, you know what I, I want to happen is I want this to be the same color as the road. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that exact color, but I don't like it the way it is. That's a little bit better. I wish you could have like the road actually on this, like this road texture, but I don't believe that's going to be really an option for us. If someone knows of a mod or an asset pack that, you know, adds this texture in so that we could add it in here, that would be fantastic, but I don't believe it exists. This is a little bit better for now. Uh, I do want to go ahead and see if we have some kind of element that we can place in the corners as well, though. These would be good, but they don't turn corners. <laughs> uh, so maybe we could add like a wall. Actually, that's not a bad idea. We had a wall there, a wall there. That sort of works. I like that. We'll leave it like that. All right, I'm going to go through in a time lapse and try and figure out what colors we want some stuff to be. All right, we're going to pause the decorating there for a little bit. I don't know how I feel about the red. I like the yellow. That's what we're using for all our thumbnails at the moment. So I think that kind of works. Uh, I think I definitely want to change the color of these tables a little bit though. And I'm not 100% sure on this red. I think we'll probably end up changing that. Uh, it's a lot. Kind of marks out nicely where our secure zone is, but I d don't think I like it. The reason I want to pause right this second is because we have another contract negotiation that we can do. We only have five points. This is with fuel and go, so we could get six points total for this negotiation. I think it might be worth waiting a little bit longer, but I'm not going to. We can always negotiate this again later on. So let's see how far we can go with this. <laughs> because I would like to have this fuel pricing as low as possible. And I mean, they're really not going to budge all that much. We're only going to say 14 cents and 4 cents. I don't think that's really worth it. That seems like a little bit not worth it at all. So we're going to wait on that for just a little bit there. And we'll jump right back into decorating. I think we'll call that pretty good for the moment. I'm not too sad about the color scheme. The yellow is definitely a lot. Uh, and I'm not sure if for the long term we'll keep this, but I would love to know what you guys think of this. It's definitely looking a little bit better. I kind of don't mind the carpet texture here. And I kind of like that the lines are included in the carpet texture just to like show the distinction between the secure zone and the non-secure zone. I like that as a concept and I think we're getting there. 
I think we are definitely getting there. We're definitely raking in the money right now, which is going to allow us to buy this tile in the next episode and start working on a medium runway along here. We'll extend this terminal secure area up to here. Maybe throw some helicopters on like the side and then later on i have no idea where we're gonna put the large aircraft but we'll figure that out when we get to it i'm sure we'll find a spot somewhere uh we might even have to come like up this way i don't know or have uh remote stands for those but we'll figure that out once we get there i think we are looking pretty pretty good i don't think there's really a lot else i want to do before we work on the uh before we start working on the medium thing one thing i am noticing is i didn't actually put walls on this elevator and it's in the wrong spot so we're going to demolish that and fix that real quick a little bit of a fix it episode for this one but we're going to have walls there which means we can actually put the walls in down here as well which will look a little bit better because we don't have a wall on this side and that was annoying me that it didn't fit but i just misplaced it so that's always nice to see when you see your own mistakes before the YouTube comments have to point it out for you. Wait for this to be demolished, build one more there, and throw in some walls, and throw in some walls, and that's much nicer. I don't know if we can get an elevator in between these. We actually could if we wanted to. We could have three elevators going up and down, and I honestly don't see a reason not to, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is these probably aren't necessary and are kind of just taking up space that we don't really need to have taken up. I think that's going to look a little bit neater. Still a little bit messy down here just because of how we sort of messed this up in the first episode, but that is what it is. This tilt tray is also perfectly fine where it is. Uh, it shouldn't make a difference at all. We could replace it with a high-speed uh, conveyor system, but for now that's going to be absolutely fine. And we should be good. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about in this airport layout is as soon as we add some medium terminals, some medium stands, we're not going to have enough check-in desks for that to happen. And we've sort of taken up a lot of this area with uh, parking. <laughs> so unless we can get, if we have a look here, how close are we? This is the square there. All right, we might be okay. We might have to extend this waiting area up to like, say here some more medium check-in desks along this wall so that we can route the baggage and then have our secure area more up in this direction so i think that'll be okay also blinking at us saying we don't have enough staff we need some more ramp agents apparently let's go ahead and hire some of them employees at this point of the game really don't matter in terms of their salary so i kind of like to just over hire uh jump back into the staff overview and train all staff if you do not have the train all staff button that is because it is added from one of my mods i'm not 100 sure which one it is i think it might be airport ceo tweaks uh, but do make sure you read the steam workshop on how to install those because they're it's it's not as easy as just subscribing to it on the workshop so make sure you check that out if you do want to install some of those mods uh but yeah we're looking pretty good. We are making good money at the moment. Currently around 16,000 an hour or 500, half a million dollars a day. I think that is definitely a successful airport in my mind. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to start getting in some medium aircraft and expanding our offerings. Uh, of course, we still have to offer catering, cleaning and de-icing. We, we could do de-icing for them for the small stands but i don't know if it's necessarily worth it especially in melbourne it doesn't get that cold uh but for the medium aircraft we're definitely going to want to have cleaning and catering the small stands do not even accept that as an option so that's why we haven't dived into that just yet uh the last thing i think we will actually do before we end this episode is jump into our runway and finally finally grab ourselves some bird strike prevention just going to rotate the camera here for a second while we place these in. I like to have one on each side and then I think it's like at the end of the last stand on each side is where this works out to be best. So we'll go ahead and let those build and then we'll adjust their radius to make sure they're covering both our runways perfectly. So they shouldn't take too long to get built. 
All right, and with those in, the easiest way is to just shift click all of them. Make sure they're covering your entire runway. In this case, they are, but I'm going to bump it up just a little bit just to have that little bit of safety margin there. You'll probably get away with only running three of these, but then you'd have to figure out the spacing a little bit differently. And this is just how I've found works well for me. I mean, they don't cost that much, so we're not too worried about it. We have 1.2 million in the bank and no loans currently to our name, which is absolutely fantastic. If we wanted, we could grab another 1.4 million to get the medium airport done and dusted. But for now, that is where we're going to call the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you can become a member, please do. It really helps out the channel. But until next time, happy flying. Nope. Happy building. Happy flying. Bye, guys.